hello friends welcome to engineering tutorial so we'll continue our discussion with uh, radar systems and engineering and so far we have discussed various uh, things in the previous videos related to uh, the radar measurements and uh, also we have discussed about uh, the concept of uh, imaging sig radar signature target signature about resolution and uh, various other things so in this video we are going to discuss an important uh, concept related to radar measurements using radar which is the radar equation which is related with the measurement of the range of the target the target range the distance of the target it revolves around that so the basic measurement using a uh, radar as we all know is uh, it involves electromagnetic waves okay transmitting electromagnetic waves from the antenna which upon striking the target generate the echo signal and then we have a whole lot of circuitry which is involved which is involved in the determination of various target parameters such as range elevation angle azimuthal angle lot of other things also doppler shift various other things an important characteristic uh, associated with it is the measurement of range okay so here the amount of uh, power which is transmitted and the amount of power which is re-radiated or reflected back from the target that plays a huge role and also the type of antenna which is being used uh, as transmitting or receiving antenna that also plays a huge role so as i said here the concept of transmitted and received power com comes into play so there is a term called as power density okay so power density is basically the amount of power which is transmitted by the antenna divided by the surface area of an imaginary sphere of a fixed radius so this is uh, particularly applicable for isotropic antenna an isotropic antenna is one which radiates power uniformly in all directions so you can imagine at the center the power is being radiated and the amount of uh, the power density at any point okay here can be measured by imagining a sphere okay at that point crossing that point of a certain radius and the power density at that point will be given by the transmitted power divided by the surface area of that imaginary sphere so if you want to determine the power density at any point okay on this whole space here you just imagine a sphere determine the radius of that point from the center and divide the transmitted power with that surface area of the sphere that will be the power density at that point but in case of radars uh, isotropic antenna is not used uh, radars use directive antenna high gain directive antennas so the directive antennas they channel the power or they 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 deliberately direct the power into one specific direction normally which is in the direction of the receiver or towards the target so for radars directive antennas are used which have gain much greater than one okay so for directive antennas for high gain directive antennas the power density is same as that of the isotropic antenna but here we have an extra parameter capital g which is multiplied with it for isotropic antenna it is pt by 4 pi r square for directive antenna this g is multiplied so the gain is considerably increased for directive antenna okay so this is isotropic this is directive isotropic power radiated uniformly in all directions directive it is specifically channeled in one particular direction with high gain 
now this is the uh, case of the transmitter this much amount of power is transmitted up to this that much is discussed that is the amount of power which is transmitted by the antenna now how much power is intercepted by the target the target can be anything let us say we have this target how much of the radiated power from the transmitting antenna is captured or is uh, you know intercepted um, or strikes the target how much of that radiation so here the target it intercepts a certain portion of the incident power okay it captures a certain portion of the incident power in that particular direction and it reflects it back it re-radiates it back upon striking the target it gets reflected back in various directions so this measure of the amount of incident power which isn't intercepted by the target that is given by the or that depends on the radar cross section okay that depends on the radar cross section okay so here that is denoted by the symbol sigma okay the radar cross section which controls or which determines how much of the incident power is intercepted by the target okay so that is given by the power intercepted by the target is the power transmitted which is ptg by 4 pi r square by the directive antenna multiplied with this radar cross section parameter sigma that is the power intercepted by the target this is the power intercepted now the power which is re-radiated from the target reflected back from the target which is the echo signal which i am talking about the echo signal the power density of the echo signal the mathematical formula for that is this intercepted power okay this intercepted power ptg by 4 pi r square sigma again divided by the 4 pi r square imaginary sphere so here the power transmitted when we discussed the power transmitted case it was pt by 4 pi r square okay the imaginary sphere was this when it was from the transmitter side when it was from the transmitter side from the transmitting antenna it was the power transmitted the total power transmitted divided by 4 pi r square uh, the imaginary sphere okay this but in this case it is the same thing it is the same thing so it is the now the object the target it acts as the transmitter okay the target it acts as the transmitter and it reflects back only that much amount of power which it which it intercepts so here the intercepted power we got ptg by 4 pi r square sigma so the amount of power density of the re-radiated power is again this whole component ptg by 4 pi r square sigma divided by again 4 pi r square the same thing imaginary sphere but it is in the reverse direction in the reverse direction so the re-radiated power is given by ptg by 4 pi r square sigma which is the intercepted power the numerator this much and this again 4 pi r square is the surface area of the imaginary sphere so the radar cross section sigma it has units of area and it is unique for a particular target okay it can be different from different targets okay suppose it is a ship we are talking about will be different for a plane it will be different for a bus it will be different for a truck it will be different for a normal small size vehicle it will be different for a human being it will be different so it depends on the size of the target as seen by the radar now this is up to uh, power which is re-radiated back from the target again this re-radiated power has to be captured by the receiving antenna okay the re-radiated power has to be captured by the receiving antenna and this power received by the radar the receiving antenna is given by this much whole thing ptg by 4 pi r square sigma by 4 pi r square multiplied with the effective area of the receiving antenna a effective power of the receiving antenna which is the same as the radar cross section thing the amount of 
re-radiated power okay the amount of re-radiated power which is intercepted or received by the receiving antenna so here this a effective area of the receiving antenna parameter comes into play and that is multiplied so just try to understand the whole thing the power density basically is transmitted power divided by the surface area of the imaginary sphere so it basically tries to find out the amount of power at any given point just by imagining a circle uh, a sphere passing through that point and uh, div uh, dividing the whole surface area of the sphere by the total power the same thing happens uh, when the intercepted power comes into play the power intercepted is this depending on the radar cross section so the re-radiated power is the same principle the total intercepted power by the target divided by the surface area of the imaginary sphere but in the opposite direction so again the power received by the radar antenna again the effective area of the antenna comes into play this same as the radar cross section by the targets so same thing so same concept so the total uh, power received by the target when we rearrange all of these things it it is given by ptg ae sigma by 4 pi square r to the power 4 so this is the uh, the total received power by the receiving antenna now there is a concept of the maximum range which a radar can detect so this is the maximum distance beyond which the target cannot be detected so it is corresponding to the received echo signal power which equals the minimum detectable signal okay so the maximum radar range corresponds to the minimum detectable echo signal so when the echo signal falls below this threshold value the minimum detectable signal the quality of the signal gets affected and it cannot be analyzed it cannot be processed so the target cannot be detected so when the target exceeds the maximum radar range the quality of the echo signal falls below the minimum detectable signal and the target cannot be detected so the maximum radar range r max corresponds to the minimum detectable signal s min so when in this equation we replace pr with s min and r with r max that is maximum radar range corresponding to the power received which is the minimum detectable echo signal we get this the r max is ptgae sigma by 4 pi square s min which is the 1 by 4 to the power 1 by 4 so here in this equation we replaced r with r max r corresponding to maximum radar range and when r is equal to r max pr becomes s min the minimum detectable signal so we took r on the lhs and pr down to the denominator and then we got this whole in order to determine r max we got this whole expression ptga sigma by 4 pi square s min to the power 1 by 4 this is the standard radar range equation okay so uh, this is the whole thing related to the radar range equation so the important thing here is to understand each of these points starting from power density from the transmitter side for isotropic and directive antenna then step by step we move to the power intercepted by the target that expression then the re-radiated power from the target that expression then the re-radiated power which is received by the receiving antenna and then we substitute the maximum radar range and the minimum detectable echo signal in place of r and pr that is we replace r with r max pr with s min and then we get the value of r max okay so this is the whole concept of radar range equation the standard form the whole derivation so i hope you like this video and please subscribe my channel engineering tutorial for more such videos related to engineering science and technology have a great day thank you very much